Delivery drivers are protesting poor treatment, low wages, and working conditions in China. Is this a signal people are less afraid of publicly complaining? Welcome to China Uncensored, I'm Chris Chappell. We are getting there. I'm making a push to get China Uncensored to 2 million subscribers by the end of the year. When I started a few weeks ago, we needed 40,000 subscribers. Now it's down to just 20,000. So if you're watching and you aren't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, again, remember to make sure you're still subscribed because YouTube has been secretly unsubscribing people. And now, on with the show. So, protests aren't really the most common thing to see in China for obvious reasons. But in recent years, there have been some including over the Chinese Communist Party's draconian zero-COVID policy a few years ago. And now the protests are back, this time over the treatment of delivery drivers, mainly in the city of Hangzhou in Zhejiang province. That may seem oddly specific, but there is a reason for this. Here's what happened. The protests started when a picture went viral on Chinese social media of a delivery driver named Yang Xiaobing kneeling in front of a security guard. Some sources say that the security guard forced her to kneel, others that she was begging to be allowed to continue her next delivery. The guard reportedly snatched the keys out of Yang's scooter and then refused to return them, threatening her with a $27 fine. The reason given was that Yang apparently caused damage to some railings while scaling them for a rushed delivery. China has around 12 million delivery drivers and, like much of the rest of the world, has become a more popular service after the pandemic. But delivery drivers around the world, and particularly in China, face very demanding deadlines. Yes, China is so bad that their delivery drivers look at Amazon drivers in America who pee in bottles and think, lucky. The low-wage riders are subject to tough penalties over delays and poor customer feedback. Many also work long hours, often earning less than a dollar for each delivery. Which would explain why Yang was reportedly begging to be allowed to continue her next delivery and also just how bad a $27 fine is. It's not just the penalties that affect working conditions for drivers in China, though. A Hangzhou resident said that delivery drivers are currently working in temperatures of up to 107 degrees Fahrenheit in the city. And other social media users have also taken to defending missteps by the delivery drivers, arguing that they are forced to do things like break traffic rules or jump railings because they will be fined if their deliveries are delayed. One user said, this is the power of the platforms they work for. It's exactly how sweatshops function. Do you know how evil your business has to be to make people go online and defend poor customer service? With such bad working conditions, the situation was a powder keg. All that was needed was a spark, and that spark was Yang kneeling. Which is how we got scenes like this, and this. The delivery drivers gathered in front of the property management center that runs the building where Yang was stopped and demanded that the security guard apologize for his conduct. The guard, meanwhile, remained hidden throughout the protest, which saw food delivery ground to a halt in the area. As the protests escalated, Meituan, the delivery platform that Yang works for, said it would take thorough responsibility to look into whether the delivery driver was treated unfairly, ensure its delivery riders are properly protected, and even added that it has paid to repair the broken railings. Translation, CCP, please don't shut us down for causing civil unrest. We'll fix it, we'll fix it. Inevitably, the Chinese police were deployed including officers from tactics and special weapons teams. So things predictably got a bit ugly. Yet interestingly, the police ordered better treatment for the delivery drivers by security guards, with one officer from the local police station saying that private security guards don't have a right to issue fines and calling on them to treat the riders more humanely. Which sounds nice until you realize that's basically them saying, oppressing people is our job, stay in your lane. There were also calls from the police for both sides to hear each other out, engage in understanding, and refrain from conduct that could lead to instability. Which is a big change from the CCP's usual approach to protests. The video of the kneeling delivery driver went viral on Chinese social media sites, where it got quite a reaction. Hashtags related to the incidents have clocked up hundreds of millions of views on Weibo in the last few days, where some users derided the security guard's bullying. Other viewers criticized the security guard for lacking a sense of working-class solidarity with the delivery driver. 
which is ridiculous. I mean, it's not like communism is predicated on giving power to the workers, right? One comment said, we are all from the same background, so why are we so eager to fight each other? Another post said, there is so much discrimination in Chinese society based on occupation, origin, appearance, and region. So many delivery riders have experienced such setbacks and can't tolerate such humiliation. This is definitely a sensitive issue for CCP authorities, who are trying to stop any trouble before it gets out of control. This isn't the first incident of gig workers and security officials clashing. Research by the China Labor Bulletin, a Hong Kong-based NGO, shows gig workers have held at least 400 protests in the last five years to demand improvements. And in January, a delivery rider in the city of Qingdao was stabbed to death by a security guard for entering a building without authorization. Wu Xiaoping, a US-based human rights lawyer, blames Xi Jinping for the situation, saying he handed too much power to local officials and security forces. He told Radio Free Asia that property management in residential communities, including security personnel, carries a certain level of public power, which they have magnified out of all proportion. Property management companies form part of something Wu calls the grid system of local law enforcement, with him explaining that that's why the authorities will be on the side of the property management companies in such disputes. They're this arrogant because they have the support of the Chinese Communist Party regime. But as we've seen, this time something is different. The police didn't outright side with the property management company. Even though they took action at the protest, the police, who have mistreated the delivery riders in the past, called for greater dialogue between the delivery workers and security guards, and ordered the guards to treat the drivers more humanely. It's worth mentioning that at China's third plenum a few weeks ago, the CCP vowed to improve public opinion guidance and effectively deal with risks in the ideological domain. In other words, due to worsening economic conditions, the CCP is worried about the possibility of increasing unrest or color revolutions. And these protests could very well be an example of that, just like the phenomenon of Chinese youth lying flat or pretending to be birds. It's entirely possible, maybe even probable, that this police recommendation was just lip service by certain Chinese authorities to calm things down among the drivers and users on social media until public attention turns elsewhere and that nothing will really change. But that's also a sign that maybe the CCP is starting to lose the kind of iron-fisted grip it once had over the population. And given that these protests were hardly the first by China's delivery drivers, it's unlikely they'll be the last either. At least until the CCP can improve their situation to the enviable status of Amazon drivers in America. China Uncensored would not be possible without viewers like you. Mostly because the YouTube algorithm doesn't like us very much. So please join me on Patreon, where you can give your support for as little as a dollar a month. And as a thank you, I'll answer your questions at the end of these episodes. And today's comes from Fake Name. Hey Chris, I've just seen a video by LaoY86 about rumors about a secret coup having taken place in China. He isn't convinced, but could you look into this? Ah yes, fake name. I have heard about those rumors, and there's a reason why I haven't covered it. I don't put any stock in them. There's a reason why these rumors keep popping up. There was an actual coup attempt against Xi Jinping when he first came to power. And I do think there are plenty of people in China who would like to see Xi gone. But these rumors happen a lot. There was a big round of those rumors back in 2022, until she re-emerged and was not dead. Recently there were rumors she had a stroke too. This kind of thing happens a lot. Which is why I don't share with you guys everything I hear about. But I am keeping my eye on the situation and I will let you know if anything changes. Thanks for your question and your support, fake name. And thank you for watching. Join me on Patreon by clicking that orange button. And here's a video about the dangers of the new Chinese-made game Black Myth Wukong and why you shouldn't play it. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching China Uncensored.